Oh, 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 me oh my. Uh, Hello and welcome to the Daily Wire backstage and the world premiere of What is a Woman? The greatest investment that Ben Shapiro and I have ever <laughs> made. This is an unbelievable documentary, the greatest piece of content the Daily Wire has ever released. It pains me to have to give so much praise and attention to our very own Matt Walsh, but you are in for an enormous treat tonight. And it is just the beginning of what promises to be, what I promise you will be, the greatest month of premium content in the history of The Daily Wire. It all starts tonight with the premiere of What is a Woman coming up in just one hour's time. We're also going to this month be premiering Terror on the Prairie, uncanceling Gina Carano, making good on our promise that we made last February when Disney unceremonially uh, kicked her to the curb for absolutely nothing. This is before it became very popular and in vogue for Disney stars to make selfie videos telling the fans that they shouldn't be toxic toward uh, people on the basis of skin color and beliefs. And that in the release of The Greatest Lie Ever Told, George Floyd and the rise of BLM from Candace Owens, and backstage live at the Ryman Auditorium. That's right, us gents are going to take to the stage of the most historic venue perhaps in the country uh, once again uh, on June 29th to bring you a great live show and some of the biggest announcements that we've ever made oh, in yeah. the history of the country, uh, of the company. June is going to be lit as the kids. Did the kids say? I, I think do. some of them did. Yeah. They're aging yeah. up. They're aging up. Yeah, yeah, it's good. The kids ain't as young as they used to be. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I have to tell you that when you think about all the content that The Daily Wire is going to release in the month of June, I'm proud. I find that June, the month of June, <laughs> fills me with the most pride, perhaps, yeah. that I have ever been <laughs> filled with. And so you can imagine how happy and, I am. And you're gay. You're gay. Uh, yeah. Gay? You're happy, I'm you're filled pretty, with frivolity. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I, I'm both gay and proud in the month of June. Uh, and I know you are too. And I'm glad to see that our country is celebrating my sense of happiness, joy, and pride by doing things like waving beautiful rainbow flags over the Vatican, yep. by putting uh, rainbow flags on the sides of like Abrams tanks yep. uh, going into battle, the military saying that what we, what we are as individuals is actually the source of our strength, ignoring the fact that they've been cutting the hair off of teenage kids to make them all into mindless automatons for you know basically the entire history. Uh, of the nation. It's Pride Month. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. good to be here with you gents, w in, in whom I am also <laughs> proud. It, it is very exciting. I mean, I, I will say that, that obviously the timing of Matt's documentary, the release of it, is not a coincidence. Uh, what? Well, no, hold on. Uh, uh, and, <laughs> what? And it's, for, so I've seen it. Jeremy's seen it. Have you seen it I've yet? seen it. You've I, seen it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, okay. It is it's a masterpiece. It's a, it it's really a masterpiece. Is. You're gonna, totally. you, are, you are going to love it. And you're going to love it because not only is it really entertaining and really, really funny, like uproariously funny, it also happens to be extremely hard-hitting. I mean, it, oh. the, the points that the documentary makes, are, it's, the, these are points that all of your mindless friends who seem to just parrot whatever comes out of the mouths of the mainstream media, they need to hear these points. It's, an import, it's a really important piece of work. Matt, you did a phenomenal job with this piece. Why don't you talk? about like what it was like to make this thing, because this is a year-long process. Well, before, before, though, let me just tell people, right now is the time to go sign up at dailywire.com or go to whatisawoman.com, become a Daily Wire member right now, because in 60 minutes, you're going to want to watch the film, and the only place you can see it is at the Daily Wire as a paid subscriber. So again, head to whatisawoman.com or dailywire.com, get your subscription right now. By the way, Not only will that allow you to see the film, but it allows us to make the film. Yeah. This we, is what I was about. We absolutely cannot engage in this kind of content. Historically, The Daily Wire, we make, market, monetize our content in a single day. That's, that's great for us from a business perspective. It allows us to be very efficient in the use of our capital and grow the company. We're taking big risks now. We're making expensive content, content that, I mean, Matt, you've been working on this for a year, uh, traveled around the globe in order to do it. The only way that happens is because of our dailywire.com members, and we need you to be one of those members if you aren't already so that we continue on this journey. Be when you see this film, you will thank us for begging you for your money because it is, it is so powerful, so funny. And now, Matt, tell us about the making of What is a Woman. I was kind of enjoying listening to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, talk about being proud. I'm actually proud that, because originally we were going to release the documentary in May, and I think this is the first film in history that the, the release has been delayed for trolling purposes. <laughs> so I, I feel great about that. Um, and the film itself, that's, that, I think the, the thing that, I, that I'm proud of in the film is that it, yeah. it actually, yeah, there's, it's, it's funny. There's some trolling elements of it. We go to the Women's March and have a great time trolling them there, and that's pretty much all that's about. 
but uh, but it's actually it's a it's a film. It's actually a really good film. Credit a lot to our of course our great director Justin Folk. Um, and going around you know on this kind of journey, I think uh, the theory is that going into it is that uh, gender ideology basically collapses under the weight of a question, which is what is a woman. Yeah. And what I discovered, and I, I kind of knew that going in, I figured that would ha- is what would happen. What, I, what we discovered, though, is that actually gender ideology collapses under the weight of any question at all. <laughs> um, and, well, it's true. <laughs> yeah, going into these, some of these interviews with you know, some, some leading experts and medical authorities and professors and everything else, uh, there were kind of, I had some questions ahead of time that I was going to ask them, and there were certain questions I had pinpointed where I thought, okay, once I ask this, it might get a little bit tense. It's a little bit of a difficult question. Mm-hmm. But what we found is that, is that once you ask one real question, any kind of real question, um, that's actually a question where, you're, where you're, you're expressing some kind of skepticism in their worldview, the moment you do that, uh, everything just falls to pieces. Like, one interesting thing you'll see in the film is that um, a question like, what's the difference between sex and gender? Now, in reality, there is no difference because gender is a meaningless word. You know, it's like really talking about personality and temperament. But they're the ones who invented this distinction. And yet when you ask them, well, can you explain the distinction? They, they can't do it. Everything starts to fall apart just based on that. Yeah, their, their own concept, and they can't even tell you. Did, did you find there. yourself during the interviews? Because I went in, I had very high expectations. It exceeded my expectations, and I'm laughing. I mean, that first third of the movie, I am bowled over laughing. And then I find myself in the middle of the movie, when you start really digging into some of these questions with these people, I wanted to throw my computer across the room because of the, the really evil things that they're describing doing to kids. Did you find yourself having to kind of rein it in a little bit when you're talking to these people? Yeah, there are it, it, a couple of interviews in particular, which I think will be obvious once you're watching the film, who, who, who those interviews might be. But uh, a couple in particular where I really had to kind of hold myself back. I guess your instinct is you want to start yelling because and, 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 you're hearing things and you want to sort of yell at them about it. But um, that, as fun as that would be to do, uh, that doesn't accomplish what we wanted to do in the film. I mean, you can start yelling and then I'm making you my point. You want to expose it. Yeah. Right. Um, I think the, the, what we wanted to do was just, uh, just simply keep asking questions. Just let them... Let gender ideology basically hang itself um, it, it is, under the weight of the it questions. Is, it is amazing the difference the way the the people who are living a life based in reality speak in the movie. Like guys like Jordan Peterson. Is that Carl Truman? Is that is, Carl, yeah, 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 Carl Truman? And and the the lady psychiatrist. I didn't catch her name. Uh, you know the way they just speak about facts and history and and ideas and put them all together. Whereas everybody else is always fighting back. They're always on the defensive. It's always, you can't say this because you're not a woman, or you can't say this mm-hmm. because you're something else. You're not a, identified this way. Well, how dare you ask the question? And, Why are you how asking How dare you ask the question? Though. And then the one that got, the one thing that made me furious is the misuse of therapeutic language. So mm-hmm. they say, Why do you care so much? And what, what I thought you did, I mean, I think the film is terrific, Matt. You actually, and I don't even like you, so I think, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm telling you the truth. But, but I, I, what you did really well is you, you had answers, you know, because they come at you with things that, you might, that might throw you off. Like, you know, why do you care so much? <laughs> Which is well, just, just an insidious, there's stupid, one, sleazy There's one question. other thing you did. Yes, you, you were prepared. You asked questions. The other thing that you brought to this is being a stone-cold yes. sociopath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a killer. <laughs> yeah. Which is what, well, we, is what, we, which what we love about you. If, <laughs> like, I would never trust you. With anything, at any time. If, if your interests are ever set against my interests, I know what will happen. Your ability to walk into these incredibly tense, incredibly hostile, incredibly absurd environments and absorb it with a straight face. Yes, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's what makes the film, it's what made it possible for you to get what you got. And I can say with absolute certainty uh, that none of the rest of us here could have done anything no. like it. It's, it is... It is a well, because super- you all have human emotions. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the first time anyone's accused me. Oh well, yeah. that's, that's unusual. It shows you. I don't shows know. Shows you I, what level my we're heart talking. Grew three sizes that day. I, don't know, I, don't know. I think uh, it, it, there's also a little bit of a pride. I, th- I think I had to overcome some uh, some some pride in some in some points, especially when we, we made our trip to, to Africa, um, and I'm asking them questions and sort of presenting gender ideology to them, and they 
assume that I'm an advocate of these right. ideas and they think that I'm in sure, completely yeah. insane. <laughs> and uh, so I kind of wanted to pull them aside and say, hey, by the way, I don't really believe this stuff. But, uh, you know, you figure you don't you don't get kind of the the authentic reaction if you if you set it up that well, way. So. What you really get, I think, from the film is a sense that this entire ideology is rooted in a in a hatred of the fundamental institutions of the society. Hmm. Like the, the yeah. basic fundamental like, facts of life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, but it, like truth the differences between men and women, marriage, like the, the, the roles that actually make life worth living. And this is the thing that, that, I don't know if you saw President Biden's statement about LGBTQI+. We have to just, we have to keep a running tab mm-hmm. on, on, this, on this acronym because it's now growing beyond actually English letters. We've gone to Sanskrit and <laughs> ampersands and tildes and all sorts of fun stuff. And, um, and the flag is getting uglier and uglier, I've noticed. Like it started off as like a nice rainbow and now you have this bizarre- Well, yeah, because gay guys are fabulous and have a great sense of fashion. But once you add everybody else into this mix, it's just, well, the gay it, guys are being pushed out. Actually, well, so, so they're this not is cool the point that, This right. is the point I was going to make. So, the, w- one of the things that's so bizarre about the idea that there is an LGBTQI plus movement is the fact that the basic premise behind the LG movement is it dis- just complete odds with the premise behind the transgender movement. The premise of the LG movement is biological, born this way. Our behavior is unchanging; it cannot yeah. change, and therefore you should be tolerant of this sort of behavior in us. The premise of transgenderism is there's no such thing as biological reality. Right. And Everything also, and is free floating. It also, if you're a gay man, you're attracted to other men. men. Right. There's, to there's, know there's what a biological gender essentialism to men and women that yeah. underlies lesbian and gay, but is a complete opposite of, of the transgender movement, which is why you now have the bizarre spectacle of transgender women who are raping women and claiming that they are women in the process using their very female penises to do so. <laughs> and the BBC going along with it by right. changing the pronouns in its stories to, to reflect this sort of stuff. And, and in, so, so Joe Biden put out a statement on, on LGBTQI plus minus divided by sign month. And in this statement, he had what I thought was a really telling, well, uh, telling line. And you hear it a lot. And it was, we see you for who you are. And that is such the opposite of the truth. Yeah, because right. in order for me to see you as you are, there has to be some sort of objectifiable metric of, of what you are. There has to be yeah. something verifiable and objective. If, if you're walking down the street and you have an internal feeling, there's no way for me to see you, quote unquote, as you are. What this means is that you must have your feelings about the world validated by everyone, no matter how destructive they are, no matter how destructive to yourself they are, no matter what they are, it all has to be validated. And no society can function under those conditions because for me to then see you as you are means I have to now take on faith things that are blatantly untrue and at direct yeah. odds with reality. And that's really what I think the, the documentary shows more than anything else is that these people are saying things that are at blatant, direct odds with reality well, and they are torturing children in order to I address their purpose. The, worst part. the other thing that you notice and you see this in documentary a lot, but this is just the LGBT, you know, left. This is what they do. They all these kind of sleight of hand tricks. And you brought up this question of, well, why do you care so much? Well, so, hold on a second. You, you're, you're spending all this time telling us that we're supposed to care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're literally throwing parades in the streets like, hey, everybody, you should care about my sexuality. And then the moment that we actually care and say, okay, let's talk about this. Like, well, why do you care so much? So it's a sleight of hand where they, they kind of reel you in and then they change well, the they, subject. They, they do this with all sorts of culture. They say if you get involved with their culture, they say it's cultural appropriation. If you ignore their culture, they say it's erasure. But there's this, there's this very visual element, too, about the movie that strikes me that really only you could do. Because to your point, Ben, in a way, it seems like the L and the, and the G are opposed to the T, right? <laughs> but in, in another sense, there is a a commonality here between the L and the G and the B and the T and all of them and, and, and feminism and every other ism, which is all of these movements basically say men and women are basically the same. So uh, M, M plus M equals M plus W equals W plus W and the M can be the W and the W can be the M and a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. And so that's the claim that runs through all of them. And then there you are on screen this giant looking lumberjack yeah, guy with a big bushy beard <laughs> and you're talking funny. to these little girls and you say, so uh, what, what do you think a woman is? Can you tell, am I a woman? You know, and you just think, uh, uh, no, you're not, whatever a woman is, <laughs> you are not it. <laughs> and and it's, it, was, it was shocking too, you know, when you're talking to the experts, you know you're talking to frauds and yep. scam, scammers, but when you're talking to people on the street, you would think at least one of these girls would just say to you, I am. I didn't, yeah, but yeah, but, but none of them does. Down. That's the part that's and, that's, and, and how pervasive it is, that's yeah. the one thing in, the, in these kind of man in the street. I mean, everywhere we went, we went out onto the street and talked to people. And uh, we had so many conversations. So much of it obviously can't make it into the film. But the one thing that struck me, a couple things. First of all, this is utterly pervasive. It didn't matter. I tried to predict ahead of time based on how somebody looked, how old they were. 
you know, would we get a, a normal sane answer? And it was impossible to predict. I mean, you talk to someone who's in their 80s, someone who's, who's 18, it doesn't make a difference. This has just infected everyone. But um, the people on the street, what you pick up on is they don't want to give you a straight answer, but they're, they're afraid. Like, they're scared. Yes, and a lot of times uh, people yeah. would tell us, they would, you know, we would, we would tell people, we would try to stop them and say, we're doing this documentary, would you talk to us? And they say yes. And we even tell them it's about gender, but the, the moment they see where the questions are going, they say, oh, I, I can't talk about this. And they just, and they walk away because they're afraid. Whereas with the so-called experts, what you get is anger. You know, they're, they're, they're angry that, you're, that you would deign to ask them any questions at all because they think the relationship's supposed to be, they tell you, and then you just said, I'm supposed to sit there. Especially me, of all people, as just kind of this, like, I, I, didn't even, I didn't even go to college. I'm, just, I'm supposed to just sit there and say, okay, Mr. But Matt, well, the, the anger of the experts is the source of the fear. Yes, of the right. everyday American. That's right. right. Yeah. And, and imagine, too, you've dedicated your life from, let's say, the end of high school, through college, through graduate school, through your PhD. You're, you've tried to get tenure. You have dedicated your life <laughs> to a nonsense a delusion yeah. that you, an uneducated podcast host, <laughs> yeah. deflate with one question. That I would be furious, too. <laughs> I wasted my but, life. But it is amazing how quickly they throw you out. I mean, how quickly the minute they see that they're not in... One, one of the people says to you, and nobody disagrees with this except the dinosaurs, which is that's the ugliest thing they can say to you, <laughs> that right. you might be old, you might be unhappy. But that person actually says, no one disagrees. No one disagrees. And only, yeah. only when Matt pushes back says, no one? Well, the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs. Like the, the initial statement is... No one because you're not a person if you disagree. Right, right. and also really remember, remember the the world that these people live in. I mean, they and and that person knew that what was that, that's obviously not true. But these people also live in a world where, in in their world anyway, nobody does disagree. Well, it, it yeah. demonstrates how by creating a false consensus, you can convince an enormous mm -hmm. number of people that they must go along with the false consensus. I think yes. one of the things that's happening here is there's a famous social experiment where if you go to a busy city and you stand on a street corner, and you look up into the sky and just stand there for a few minutes, then sooner. Rather than later, there'll be 20, 30, 40 people who are standing there looking into the sky because they're assuming there's a reason that you're looking into the sky. And so if you base the emperor's new clothes is real. If yeah. you if you yeah. generate a feeling that all the experts, all the wisest people among us have said that this thing is true, then you can get everybody to agree that this thing is true, particularly when it becomes a sign not only of stupidity, but also of malice and evil for you to disagree. But there's the also there's a there's an opportunity. This is one thing I hope people take from the film is that this creates an opportunity for those of us who are. Yeah, I don't even say on the right, just if you're a sane, decent person, because because they live all the experts and everything, the people that are uh, promoting this agenda, they live in this sort of bubble. Um, they've gotten they're they're weak. I mean, they haven't been they haven't been tested. These ideas have not been tested. They have a soft belly and they're not prepared to be tested. Yeah. And so it doesn't take much. All we have to do is have a little bit of a backbone and ask some basic questions. We could we can win. This is a. Gender ideology, this is a battle we can actually win. I, and I, I don't say that about very many things because I'm the, I'm the pessimist. But um, we can actually win this, I think. And I think, it, I think it's the bottom uh, stick of the Jenga tower because this is, this is the place where you can say, no, you're not telling the truth. And you know what? You're not telling the truth about race either. You're not telling the truth yeah. about all these things that they're, you know, I, this is why, you know, when you pitch, I, I hate to be an ad man, I hate to be a pitch man, but when you pitch subscriptions, you know, the, We've been doing this now for a long time. This is a this is a big moment for us, yeah. I think, where we are moving into this kind of content. And we just can't do it. We're not doing this on our own. And and the, I get so many letters. Conservatives, as you know, are naturally pessimistic. That's part of being a conservative. And I get so many letters, oh, it's over. You know, forget it. It's done. And I think, well, that makes it easy for you not to do anything. That's right. But, you know, I mean, people can actually help. They can actually be part of this. And they they think we don't we don't appreciate it. They think we don't know, you know. But we know we know we're we're walking on their water basically. If they don't if they don't fill the the tub, we can't go anywhere. Matt, we're going to let you step off set for a moment to go do another interview, and then uh, Matt will be joining us again. In the meantime, we're going to have the director of the film, Justin Folk, join us to talk a little bit about the making of the movie. But I want to follow up on something uh, on your point, Drew, which is uh, when conservatives who are naturally pessimistic uh, start to lament that there's nothing that can be done. I, I actually think that, you know, we're, in addition to being sort of preservers of tradition and institutions, we're also supposed to carry the, the light of, of biblical religion forward. And from the first pages of the Bible, God calls man to optimism. He says, be fruitful and multiply, which is fundamentally about creating Absolutely. and looking to a future, looking to the unknown, the, the, the things that are very frightening ahead of us, and nevertheless planting seeds in, hope, in hopes of a harvest. 
So to throw up your hands and give up and give up is a fundamentally anti-Christian yeah. thing to do. It's a fundamentally anti-American thing to do. Supporting the Daily Wire, becoming a member of the Daily Wire, isn't the only thing that one can do, yeah. but one must do something. Yeah. You know, to if you're if you're throwing up your hands in surrender, you are literally no good to any of us. If you're doing anything, you have my gratitude. If the thing that you're doing is becoming a member at Daily Wire, we're going to be good stewards of that opportunity. That capitalizes our business. It's not a donation. We're going to produce content and serve that content back to you. But it, but it is an investment. You're, you're planting seeds in, in trusting us that we're going to bring about a harvest. And I think tonight we're going to make good on that promise in a major way. I think all through the month of June, we're going to make good on that promise in a major way. There are other ways to capitalize businesses. You don't want us to capitalize this business right. that way. That's, That's right. the key. That's right. the key because you you can get money, especially for a company this size. There are e- really easy ways to get money yeah. that come with all sorts of strings, and there is an ESG. ideological yeah. component, ESG, environmental, social, and governance policies that that and rip out the diversity and inclusive policies. And, and yeah. whoever gives you the money, that's who you're indebted to, and we want to be indebted to our audience. Right. That's exactly. Right. And I think that's one of the things that, that what Matt's documentary is going to show you tonight, and it really is. Again, I, I can't praise it highly enough, but I'm not going to have to sell it to you in about right. 38 minutes. You'll see it yourself. Uh, the, 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 if you subscribe, which you should. The, what, what Matt's documentary really shows more than anything else is that w- the left-wing ideology is a balloon. And it's yeah. filled with hot air. And it feels really, really big. I mean, it's looming there on the horizon. And it's just enormous. And it's every corporation. And you, you log on to, to watch ESPN or CNBC. And you're seeing pride progress flags mm. dedicated to the notion that gender doesn't gender and sex are completely separate but also the same and they don't exist and they do exist and mm. and, you're, and it feels like you're being beaten over the head with this matt is one guy with a beard a <laughs> camera and some funding from us <laughs> and he went to the the bastions of this ideology and with one question he completely collapsed it because That's the right. thing about that balloon is it's full of hot air all it and takes so, is all it takes is a man some tenacity a beard, a million dollars from the God King, <laughs> and the directing talent of Wait, one b- Justin before, Folk. Before we bring Justin, I have to say, just, uh, personal note, Justin Folk be, did the first series of videos I ever did, the Clavin on the Culture videos for PJTV. Indeed, did. And I'm so happy to see he has redeemed himself. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do all of this to, to get your <laughs> to get back. again. Yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, no, guys, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. And... Man, what a privilege, you know, to make a movie uh, with you guys. It really has been a privilege. Uh, I also want to thank you for ruining my Hollywood career. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> you're welcome. Whatever, had, whatever we can do for you. I had some real ambitions of uh, directing Glee Part 4. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of out the window now. But, uh, no, it's been a privilege. And, and working with Matt has been awesome. Uh, I've gotten to know Matt, and Matt's a guy that, like, has such an interesting personality. He is so funny. But you have to kind of understand. You kind of have to, you have to watch him. And, um, and he never yeah. shuts up. That guy, he's <laughs> oh, yak, yak, yeah, yak yeah, all day. Yeah. Uh, but when Matt laughs, he goes, he basically, you know, you know he thinks something's funny because he shows about like an eighth of an inch of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he just does that. But no, this was great. And What was your uh, biggest takeaway in the making of the film? Well, um, what moment sticks out to you the most? I, th- I, think, I think I had a lot of takeaways. I think the biggest takeaway I had that came while we were making the film was how important this was. Mm. Um, you know, when we started out, and I kind of, Matt told me the idea of the film, I was kind of like, ah, I don't know, you know, this is, an inju- this is an issue that people don't want to touch. They don't think it affects them. They think that they can kind of live their lives with their kids and do their thing, and, and this thing won't affect them in any sort of way. And, and I just felt like, okay, how do, how do we do this? You know, how do you do a movie on this issue, the gender ideology thing? And when Matt told me sort of the method, and you guys have been talking about the method, the sort of... Socratic method that he was going to go about doing this, which was just simply ask questions and then watch this thing unravel. I was like, wow, that could work. But it really wasn't until we got into it when we started to ask these questions and we really began to find out how pervasive this is all throughout society, how it's coming everywhere, and how parents are having their rights stripped away, how kids are having their lives and their bodies ruined. Um, that's when it really dawned on me, like, wow, we're, we're really doing something important here, which is kind of the t- important decision for me, too, because it's like, am I willing to throw myself out there as a director on this yeah. topic and do this? And, and the importance helped that. Our dailywire.com members are able to ask questions, uh, and this question just came in for you. Without giving anything away, what do you think is the most important interview in the film? The most important interview? Yeah. Um, 
I think the most important interview is probably we, we have a, uh, a transgender person, a hero in our film, Scott Nugent. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott is yeah. a person that transitioned from uh, female to male and tells the story. Of course, uh, Scott has endured some tremendous uh, physical difficulties and health problems as a result of the transition. But, but more importantly, Scott speaks so well about why we need to prevent this from happening to kids specifically. And I think because it's such a human story. It's such a real story. It's somebody who's lived it. I, I think that's why, that's probably one of our most important interviews that we did. Yeah. The most uh, interesting, the most interesting interviews in the movie to me actually are the people on the street. Hmm. And it's, it's not that they have anything to offer. They don't. And that is what makes it so interesting. Hmm. They don't even offer the party line answer. Yeah. They're, they're all, everyone just about terrified. that you speak to is terrified and speechless. The ambiguity is part of the weapon that the left uses. I mean, Ben, you just you just hit on this, the idea that, you know, sex doesn't matter except that it does, gender isn't real except when it is, you know. All these, all of the contradictions that are inherent in transhumanism, fundamentally, gender is a social construct. Therefore, here are 58 genders that no one in your social order has ever heard of or conceived. I mean, none of it makes any sense, and, and that's the feature, not the bug. That's right. Because then it really comes down to the deconstructionist point of view, which is that everything is power. Yeah. So the, the postmodernist point of view, the sort of Michel Foucault, Jacques Derrida point of view, is that all rhetoric, all logic, all this stuff, these are just systems of power that are finding a way to express themselves. Yeah. And they accuse you know, capitalism being a system of power, or they accuse free speech of being a system of power. But the reality is the reason they say this stuff is because for them, everything is a system of power. Because yeah. in the end, they are petty tyrants. And the idea is that if we confuse you so much that you don't understand what's going on, then if you, and if you wrong step, we destroy you, then the only safe path is to just repeat everything I say. It's just say after me. And if you don't repeat it in exactly the words that I'm using, mm -hmm. then you must repent. And if you don't repent, then we'll destroy you. And if what I'm saying tomorrow is different than what I'm saying today, again, that's a feature, not a bug, because you're demonstrating your fealty to the ideology by what you're willing to give up. If the idea in any sort of ideological system is that your loyalty to the system can be proved by how much skin you have in the game, which is fairly true, right? If you're a Christian, then you have to involve yourself in certain practices. You have to go to church every Sunday. You have to bar yourself from certain behaviors. If you're an Orthodox, you have a ton of stuff that you can't do. There's just certain things that you have to do and not do. When it comes to leftist ideology, the skin in the game is simply you have to give up all rootedness in logic and reason when it comes to gender ideology, and you have to just pretend along with us, and you have to mirror exactly what we say. So if I, if I tell you right now that biology is a, is a social construct, but also that children are born transgender. If I tell you those two <laughs> things simultaneously, the male and female are categories that don't exist, but a male can become a female by doing surgeries to his body to make him appear more like a biological female. Two things which are in complete contra contradiction with one another. If you, if you say those things and you say them and you hold them in your head, that is not only demonstration that you are virtuous, it is demonstration that you are willing to give up your own mental health, your own, your own sense of intellectual honesty. To give up in order, To give up everything. I mean, there in was, order to be one of us. And it's, it's all one of us kind of stuff. There was this really scary aspect to that Will Thomas interview. Will goes by Leah, the swimmer on the UPenn team. And I, I felt conservatives were reacting to it in a spike the football way, like, ha ha, we got him. You know, he's admitting that transgenderism is false because he, he couldn't answer the question. He just said, well, you know, I don't really care. I'm happy now. And I don't care what the other girls think. I'm happy now. To me, that's not a spike the football moment. What's so scary about that is he says, damn logic, damn truth. All that matters is my will. All that matters is my desire. I mean, frankly, it, not to be hyperbolic, it's sort of like the Marquis de Sade. Why, why does your pain matter any more than that, my that, desire? That's absolutely true. It's, it's also Orwell, the, one of the scariest lines in all of literature, is two and two is not five, two and two is not four. It's what the party says yeah. it is. And that's exactly what you're talking about. That's right. The, the Leah Thomas interview is astonishing, by the way. If you, if you haven't actually seen it, the number of unbelievably narcissistic things that are said in that interview. And, and again, self-contradictory things. One of the things that Leah Thomas says in a voice significantly deeper than my own, <laughs> in which is no great accomplishment except that Leah Thomas is supposed to be a woman, uh, is that Leah Thomas at one point is asked about the non-competitive nature of a biological man who is enormous, racing against far smaller and uh, biological women who went through female puberty. And he says, well, you know, I took estrogen and estrogen has made me slower and it has made me feel weaker. And it's like, yes, that's the point. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. That's the point. So you had like a year of some estrogen shots. How about you try all of puberty yeah. of bodily produced estrogen? Like, uh, how about that? But it's, and then, so, but it's so awful because a woman is an actual 
kind of person. And, and How so, dare you say yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> so, so they play. They, no, so they, these women who are women go out and become excellent in a sport, in That's women's right. sports, and he strips it away from them. Who was it who wrote this? Someone with a straight face actually said this week that women's sports were created to protect men mm-hmm. from having to lose to women. <laughs> from the humiliation of having to lose to women. Who, yeah. who was it, Ben? I'm trying to remember who it was. Is it? It was a yeah. comment, I think, for the New York Times, maybe. They believe it. Yeah. The National uh, well, that is, Champion. That's the they scary thing. It. They do believe They do believe that. Justin, here's it's another it's question. From a person that hasn't watched one game in their life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally. Here's another question from a DailyWire.com member. Did any of the hostile interviewees recognize Matt when he sat down? Yeah. It's a good question. No, actually, uh, they not that I know of. Um, but we did have cameras rolling as soon as we got in the room, uh, usually for these interviews, just in case they did. And and uh and and knocked over our cameras and stormed out but uh during the interview itself uh uh you know it goes ba- back to matt's just ability to to carry on a conversation it just by the way don't play poker yeah no yeah, yeah, uh, sure. don't do it like <laughs> yeah it's a no you don't tug on superman's cape yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't play poker with him that's what i learned uh in making this movie but they could not read him and so uh and that's what we you know it's a 90 minute film but a lot of these conversations were about an hour long right yeah and these people were just, and, they, and I had a good crew that, that wouldn't crack, and they're just professionals, and so they couldn't read anybody. And they're looking around. You can see in the interviews themselves, they're kind of looking around, like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. Is this for real? Is it what, you know, and Matt would just kind of keep the conversation going. And, and, um, and so, no, nobody recognized him. He's hard um, to recognize without the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Will we get to see any of that extra footage, anything that, wasn't act- that didn't make the cut? Absolutely, absolutely. We have so much uh, uh, great moments that, that didn't make the cut, and... Uh, Looking forward to get that stuff out there. We Africa was incredible. That was uh, that's, that's some like, of the best stuff. I feel like yeah. we've glossed over the fact <laughs> that you flew to Africa. Yeah. yeah, in fact, here's a question from one of our members. <laughs> How does one coordinate talking to a real African tribe? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, no, that is a good question. Uh, no, uh, we went through the normal channels. We reached out to some... What are the normal channels? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, if, you, if you Google uh, uh, www uh, uh, talk to Africans about transgender. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, that's it'll, like, that old it'll, site. It'll lay it all. I out hang out on that site all the time. Yeah, so. it's all right there. Um, but no, we we just said, hey, we're making a movie. We we have some questions. We want to go and, and dig deep and, and and reach one of the tribes in Africa. There's some film fixers that helped us out. They had producers on the ground, and it all came together uh, miraculously. It all kind of just came together, and next thing you know, we're out there and spent the whole day with this tribe. Um, <laughs> one little note I'd like to say about the tribe, and, and this is something that, did make the, the, uh, that, that didn't make the final cut that you can probably see in the extra footage, is uh, Matt actually asked the tribe um, just about if anybody in the tribe deals with depression mm-hmm. or mental illness or anything like that. And, and they, just, they just said no. It's like an emphatic, like, yeah. no. No, no, we don't deal with that here. No, we're, you don't. We're happy. We have now, duties. They have other right. uh, real concerns, like lions coming into the yeah. village and eating everybody. <laughs> but on the mental illness and the depression thing, it was like, no, everybody has their, they have an identity, and their identity is wrapped up in their community and their role within the community, and what they do for the community. That's what their identity is. You know, and it was, it was pretty striking when he asked that question. There's an, there's an article in the Wall Street Journal this morning uh, saying that, that Democratic uh, wealthy societies have the most mental illness because you become severed from the roles that you so often talk about that bring us into relation with one another and define you. You know, this is this is what happens when you're defined. And the early, di- I, I like to read, I, I think Walsh likes to read these too, the uh, uh, biographies and autobiographies of explorers in Africa. And one thing that comes across all the time is they're walking into a system that works. They're walking into a system where the women know exactly what they do and they talk about, well, they don't have power, but they do have power. They have enormous power Absolutely. because they know exactly what their role is and it's essential to their community. They may not have uh, political power, but they have the power of creation and the power of, of homemaking and food making and all these things. And, and all of that vanishes when you become part of a mechanistic society that is based wholly on the individual. I have to say, you know, very shortly after I started working at the Daily Wire, I remember talking to my son, Spencer, no relation, and saying, you know, I've been an individualist all my life, and now that I hear it coming out of my mouth, I realize it's not enough. You have to be in relationship. It has to be about who we are together. And that's what they've, they've basically thrown a grenade into that entire system. That's exactly right. I mean, well, the, the, the complete destruction of societal institutions. You have to understand that I think that that, that is the goal because this is a way yeah. of people feeling about themselves. 
One of the people you interview in the film is Carl Truman. As I said before, Carl Truman's book, The Rise and yeah, Triumph of the Modern right, Self, is a deeply book. important book. And, and the, the point that he makes, in essence, as I've said before, is that the way that people used to identify was in relation to their role in society. You were born into a biological body. You, you were born into a system that pre-existed you. The world didn't begin turning the moment that you arrived. Now we have this conundrum in sort of liberal democracy. Why am I bound by the Constitution? I was, it was born after the Constitution. I didn't consent to being part of the social, <laughs> social compact. And the answer is because you didn't consent to being born either. I mean, this, you, you were born into systems. Those systems helped define you. And that's not a bad thing. That's a very good thing. That, that helps provide channels and boundaries. It helps take the evolved wisdom of society over thousands of years and make that accessible to you in the way that people around you live and what is expected of you in terms of your duties. And we used to understand that. And now the way that we define ourselves is our authentic sense of self-fulfillment. And once you believe that what you are is your authentic sense of self-fulfillment, you are automatically oriented toward destroying all of the institutions around you because all of those institutions are in position on the real you. The real you is somebody who exists in the absence of any of these societal influences, in the absence of any of these important institutions. Reality. So if you can just destroy, yeah. you, the, more, the more institutions you wreck, the more authentic this you are. This is like Calvinism and Arminianism to me, though, that it's, I hate false binaries that ideology creates. You know, it's free will. No, it's predestination. No, you have a cantaloupe-sized brain and you can't actually conceive of two sides of the same coin. <laughs> and so you, you pick, it's like, a, it's like one guy's a night owl and one guy's a morning person, and they're arguing over which is the better time. <laughs> they're, they're both time. Like, they are both a, a, a real expression of time. And this is true with rugged individualism versus, uh, you know, sort of corporatism or communitarianism. Yeah. America's sense of rugged individualism is good. It takes place in a society right. Right, which is structured around social order and social so I would say ordered and liberty. And it's and called this, ordered liberty, not just liberty, ordered liberty. And this is right, the other course. thing about this, this uh, therapeutic language that they pull on Matt where they say, you know, why do you care? The thing about therapy, what's interesting is, is you're non-judgmental about a person, but you're not judge, non-judgmental about a situation. If somebody talks to you, and I've been in this situation because I've been on hotlines and things like that, when, and they call you up and they say, I'm cutting myself. You don't say, oh, that's great. What? Right. Yeah. But Unless you you're in New York City, by the way. Did you see those heroin ads? <laughs> oh, yeah. see this. No. New York be City proud. put out heroin ads. They put be out ads oh, yes, on I subways did see that. Oh, my in which God. they said, yeah. be pr don't be ashamed that you're using heroin. Be proud that you're doing it safely. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, but, contrary to you. Yeah, yeah so, no, but what, what you do say is you don't condemn the person for doing it. You sort of explore why they're doing it. You're non-judgmental in that sense, but you're not non-judgmental about the fact that what they're doing is yeah. bad. As, I, as I've said on this program before, a healthy society has a... Ha, has Liberals, right? Yeah, a healthy yeah. society has a healthy left. It doesn't have an ascendant left. That on, on the side of uh, arguing for trad community, uh, or communal living, lies wisdom and great, great evil. On the side of uh, liberalism and, and individualism lies great truth and great beauty and great evil. That the nature of being humans is that none of our, none of our ideas take into their fullest, most extreme version are good because we're not fundamentally That's good, right? right? There's this, one of the things that religion does is it moderates us away from ideology. Now, when you're an early convert, there's the reason that Paul says not to put early converts in charge, by the way, in the New Testament, because early converts become incredibly ideological, zealous. incredibly zealous, incredibly dogmatic. They become very dug in on their ideas. Part of that's out of enthusiasm. Part of it's out of fear. They just grab something. They don't want anybody to They're be also afraid, afraid of doing the, the wrong thing. You don't know enough to know That's where right. the loopholes are. But the reality, I think, of religious life, the, re the reality if you read religious thinkers of all stripes across history, real, real intellects, is that everyone sort of understands that God on can only relate to fallen man because those are the only men with whom he gets to relate, right? So there, 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 is, a, there is a beauty in the sort of humility that it takes to say, I have these ideas. I see wisdom and beauty in these ideas, and these ideas are not all. I'm not capable of understanding all and, of them. And ideas. in terms of the relationship and, and the idea that man has identity in relationship, I mean, one, this is why modern people don't get Socrates. There are lots of reasons not to get Socrates, but, you know, the fact that he accedes to death rather than being exiled because his identity would mean nothing if he were outside the city. But then even furthermore, God himself, right? God in Judaism, God himself has a relationship with the people of Israel. And in Christianity, God has a relationship with himself because he is three persons. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is where identity lies, right? It's not just some atom floating out in space. I, I actually believe, I believe, you know, I listen to you guys sometimes, the, the Protestants argue with the Catholics, and I sometimes think this is how God is teaching us 
that institutionalism, the, the, the togetherness of it all, and the independence of it all are somehow going to have to be reconciled in ways that our cantaloupe-sized brain does not understand. At the stake. But, but, that's where it's going to be reconciled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, had me, you had me right up against yeah. that. could possibly be right. There's a question, <laughs> Justin. It's obviously not working. Right? <laughs> yeah. The worst thing that happened at Westphalia is we, we agreed to disagree. <laughs> it always uh, comes back to Westphalia. Literally every it always episode. Comes as in, back. Have we gone through a single episode of Backstage in what, five years, six years, seven years without yeah. How bringing could we? it back to the piece of Westphalia? We, we either, no, we either, get, as we either get back to that or we that's get back favorite, to what came before. It's my before. favorite band. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Question from a dailywire.com member Would this film work as a good educational tool for church audiences? Context I'm a newly ordained priest trying to convince my bishop of this cultural tidal wave hurtling toward the church. Depends who your bishop is, if, <laughs> if you'll be allowed to do it. You know, th there's a, a bishop in San Francisco who just got a lot of publicity because he fulfilled his duty as a bishop and told Nancy Pelosi that she's in a state of grave Whoopi mortality. Goldberg says that's not his job. Oh, it's not his <laughs> job. Not his job. Ah, uh, well, Whoopi. I mean, you know, <laughs> literally his job. But, you know, yeah. Whoopi, St. Whoopi knows, Archbishop Whoopi knows. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he, this guy had the courage to actually do his job and, and fulfill the faith. Uh, his name is Cor, Cor de Leone. It literally means heart of a lion, you know, mm -hmm. so this is a guy who's willing to stand up. If you have a bishop who has courage, which is a virtue and the prerequisite of all the other virtues, th I think this movie would be an incredible, yeah, me too. timely, important, intellectually serious, yeah. very funny resource. Uh, and if your bishop doesn't like it, Maybe don't tell them about the viewing party. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, it, uh, yeah, I mean, what, what I would say is for, you know, age restrictions, uh, if, if your kid is old enough to understand that these issues exist, so probably 14, 15 and up, yeah. uh, then, it's, then it's totally worth the watch. Like all content that we make at The Daily Wire, this is not content for uh, sort of superficial religious sensibilities, yeah. right? This, this isn't like, if, if you it's get the... About hard issues if hard you get the vapors, then this is yeah. not for you. Yeah, right. uh, if you get the vapors, though, I don't think any single page of the Bible is for you. Is the truth. <laughs> I also don't think, this, by the way, this if, is a very. Uh, you're, if you get your the point, vapors, you're also going to lose this battle. I'm just going right. to say it yeah. straight out. If they, because because what the left is counting on is for you to get the vapors. Say, I don't even want to talk about this. I don't want to see it. That's I don't want right. to hear about it. And therefore, you just sit aside while you watch them march right through the institution. So if you want to fight it, this is the only way to fight it. And every piece of content that we're making at the Daily Wire. We're trying to contribute something to the actual conversation, not the theoretical, hypothetical conversation that that very uh, buttoned up, buttoned up people are having in their mind. Well, you mind. put it very well, Jeremy. You say we make content that conservatives want to see, not content that they want to want to see. That's right. <laughs> Did you say that? No, that's a good line. Yeah, that's pretty good. good. Just one point in terms of the religious nature here, and and, and it's something that I discovered in making this thing was, uh, you know. With Judeo-Christian values were taught that were made in the image of God. That's 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 what our society is pretty much built on, and this ideology attacks that. Yep. This is no. Oh yeah. No, you're not in the made in the image of God. In fact, you might be a mistake, yeah. and in fact, you can correct that mistake. In fact, you can play God and correct that mistake. Yeah. And so it really it really it goes against this sort of this real real down deep notion of we are made in the image of God. And, uh, and that's why I think it's so destructive. Yeah, well, it's he, funny, he it's funny. Bill Maher, the big atheist, said almost exactly that. He said, what happened? Were all the babies put in the wrong bodies? Was there a mistake at the factory? Is this, is this the version of Captain Crunch? Oops, it's all berries, you know? I mean, <laughs> this is what Bill, Bill Maher is saying. I was thinking, where do you think the factory is, Bill? Because, <laughs> because what they're ultimately rejecting is the first pages of the Bible. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right? They're, they're rejecting the fundamental reality of that, that God made man in his image, with purpose, by design. Uh, and then, male, and, the, male and female, he made them, it says. Right. Yeah. 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 Again, right. I, I go back to, image, and, and the reason they're denying this is, they're, they're not denying it because they don't think it's true. They're denying it because they think it's true. That's correct. They're, they're, the they're, same, they're, for the same reason that I was just talking, uh, uh, sometimes I speak ill of the zealots, <laughs> you know, of, of the dogmatic Christian zealots, uh, but it's the same reason, because it is their fear that makes them unable to actually engage with the idea that may challenge the thing to which they're holding on to. Their, their fear of being wrong means that you can't speak at all. Mm, yeah, That's yeah. The, that, is the, that is a base human well, reaction. Because if they're wrong, see, if, if we're wrong, we can change our minds, but if they're wrong, their virtue is gone. It, That's right. Right. It's also, the, it's yeah, also an attack right. on their identity. Yeah. Right, so the, 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 you hear this language all the time. What you're saying is an attack on me. It's a violent attack. You're erasing me. You're, you're, well, if what you are saying is that who you are is not anything objective, not verifiable, not in coordinates with society, not in, in there, there, there's literally nothing to you except what you feel at this very moment, 
then of course anything I say that disagrees with you is an attack on you because you've literally defined you yeah. as whatever you feel in this moment. So if I say something that makes you feel bad about yourself or makes you feel that what you're saying is incorrect, that is in fact an attack on your identity, which is why this is not your identity. It is a lie. That's your identity right. is not whatever you happen to think at this specific moment. It is how you orient yourself to the world and how you deal with the fact that you live in a biological body, with the fact that there is a society around you that has rules, and that those rules exist because they have been passed down from time immemorial to help with the healthful transition of the species toward tomorrow and toward the creation of children. The most perverse thing that I've seen the left do with this stuff is pretend that it's on behalf of kids. It is not on behalf of yeah, kids. Yeah. It's an attack on children. It is an attempt to yeah. pervert children in order to validate your own sense of self-worth. That is why it is so important to have drag queen story hour for seven-year-olds. Mm -hmm. It's why it's so important to teach radical gender ideology to first graders because it's not about Oh, there may be a, a transgender five-year-old. There's no such thing as a transgender five-year-old. There may be such a thing as a child with gender dysphoria, which may or may not alleviate naturally over time. There is no such thing as a boy who thinks he is a girl and and knows this in the deep uh, uh, bare bones of that because that doesn't exist. Well, as a not, factor there's of no life. such thing as transgenderism in yeah. that we're saying that. As That's an right. ontological category, right. boys you, are not secretly girls on the inside. Right, and so the, right. But they, 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 when, when they say this is about the mental health of children, when you take a wide, vast swath of kids and you confuse them about gender at an age when they are the most impressionable, which is why we are supposed to take care of innocent children, the reason that you are doing this is not to take care of the kids. You're deliberately confusing hundreds of millions of children. Deliberately, you're doing it to make yourself feel better about yourself. And you, and you see it. In these TikTok videos of these first grade teachers, or you know how make, good it makes me feel when I talk about my gender identity with third graders? You know how good it makes me feel when I announce my sexual orientation to a bunch of small children? Who gives a flying <laughs> how it makes you feel when you talk to a small kid but about this, sex? But this points out why we feel we love this country and we feel it's basically benign. Because for all its sins, which are human sins that are always going to be there, it basically lets us find our way and form right. relationships. Whereas for them, it's always an imposition on that personal you know, joy that they're gonna have because they're never actually gonna have it. So it must be somebody's fault. You know? Justin, uh, thank you so much for making this movie. Thanks for working yeah, with us on it. We're gonna get I, Matt back out here, but we'll like, see you at the like after party. Why you, you talked about how great it was to work with him. I've never heard you say that about me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, have a good night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of you, now's a good opportunity. There are 12 minutes before we bring What is a Woman to its worldwide premiere. Head over to whatisawoman.com and become a Daily Wire member right now. You have 12 minutes left to catch the film in its debut. You will not be sorry, and it will give us the power to continue making this terrific kind of content going forward. Some people have asked us, you know, if the film is so powerful, if it's so important, uh, why are we locking it up behind a paywall? And the answer is because a nonprofit could not make this movie. Right. Uh, I can prove it. There are a billion dollars of conservative nonprofits out there, and none of them have made this movie. Th this is the, the kind of content that only comes into existence through a profit mechanism. It comes into existence because of our DailyWire.com members, and therefore we have to monetize it to our DailyWire.com members. How, how, therefore, can it ever expand its influence? Well, first of all, we're talking about it very publicly, not behind a paywall. There will be clips of it that are very public, not behind a paywall. We give away 95% of our content. Our business model is terrible. Our business model is because we're, we're, we have a profit motive and a missional motive. Here's 95% of everything for free. We hope people will pay for the 5% that's uh, behind. But I'll go further than that. If this were behind a paywall at Netflix, people wouldn't be asking us that question mm, right. because they would understand that the number of people behind the paywall at Netflix is sufficient that that would satisfy their need for the, for the film, or for the content to have cultural penetration. Well, you only get there if you add the subscribers. So in a way, people are asking, they're saying, you don't have enough subscribers. We think this content is so valuable that everyone should be able to see it, but we shouldn't have to pay for it. That's the first contradiction. The second contradiction is, uh, we think that you don't have enough subscribers for it to make sense for you to put the show behind your paywall. Therefore, we will not add more subscribers <laughs> to you by becoming a subscriber. The, it only works if it works. And the only way that it works is if you join us. Dailywire.com, whatisawoman.com. Become a member now. Ten minutes to go until the world premiere. The of other reason, uh, yeah, I, I, it's a really simple concept, really. It's, it's support the content that you want and don't support the content that you don't want, <laughs> which, which, I mean, yeah. by the way, there's this, whole, there's this whole controversy now over the new Star Wars TV show and the actress is complaining about the fact that uh, and the uh, and, uh, and Ewan McGregor's come out and, and called his the own his own fan base 
racist and everything. And uh, this is the game that Disney plays at Star Wars. They always, they, where they, they, they put these characters out there who they know are unlikable and the audience isn't going to like. So they could trap the audience into complaining about it so they can call them racist and virtue signal. Right. And then, but then the problem is that, is that conservatives keep supporting that content, yeah. even though we're tired of that game. And then there's content elsewhere that's, uh, that, that's the kind of content you want. But then you say, well, I shouldn't have to pay for that. I shouldn't have to support it. That's just, that's just not how it works. If you want the content, then support it. There's a lot of stuff that we do at The Daily Wire. I think almost everything that we do that, that can only happen here. I mean, this film, I'm well aware of the fact that there's, I could not have gone anywhere else to do this film for one thing because I because I'm under contract, but also, <laughs> <laughs> but also because no nowhere else could this film exist. Well, and, that, um, that's that's because basically, I mean, not to pat ourselves on the back here, but that's because of the producers. And what I was going to say here is not just you know uh, because Jeremy and I are wonderful, though, though we <laughs> clearly are, but really the the major producer of the film is the subscribers. When we talk about the subscribers, the, the subscribers are effectively executive producers on the film yep. because it is their money that is going into the film. Yep. You guys have opted to give us your money so that we can make stuff. Like this, and we think of you guys as the people who are collaborating in the creation of content that is going to change hearts and that's going to change minds. And again, our goal is to get not hundreds of thousands of people behind our paywall, but millions of people behind our paywall so that every day you have millions of people who are ingesting content that is healthy for them and that is good for them and that helps change the discourse and that makes you into a weapon for truth and for values that actually matter. Because it's, it's not just for, you know, movies like this aren't just for people who don't know better. They're for people who know but don't have the words to speak. Yeah. And, 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 then, and I think and that's Netflix what this movie does. does. compete with us, which changes, it changes the their entire behavior. landscape. It yeah. changes their You're behavior. also not subscribing for what is a woman. You're getting what is a woman tonight. You're subscribing for the next what is a woman. Yeah. And you're subscribing for the next one. And, you know, th- this movie would not have existed without all the support from our members already. The next one the slate. The slate for 2022 is insane. It only yeah. happens with your support. So if you like it, get excited for the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, I have a question for you from one of our existing DailyWire.com members. I'm sure a lot of people will accuse you of editing to make these individuals look weak and pathetic in the film. <laughs> what is your response? Uh, I, I don't think the kind of editing exists. I mean, we would have to use so many <laughs> special effects to create, to create this. Uh, no, there was, I, I assure you, there was, there was no editing necessary whatsoever. Um, and you can see that if you actually watch the film, that's the kind of criticism that can only exist f- from people who haven't seen it. And the, the left already is already accusing us of that. And the, the film doesn't even exist for them to see yet. Yeah. Um, but if you watch it, you can see very clearly that, uh, that this, is, this is just question, answer, usually a non-answer, but that's that's all it is. That was one of my favorite things, I think, uh, about you know, the film is, is the fact that you're asking all these people these questions and they, they so clearly have no answers. And you know, the, the, the simple fact that they then, that then a few months later, you, you saw these reports in the media where they're like, Matt Walsh, when he asked us for interviews, there are all these, uh, uh, yeah. the Daily Beast did a whole piece of this. Matt Walsh is going around and asking people who are transgender advocates for interviews. And then he's filming these interviews. <laughs> and and it's, it's an act of cruel sabotage but for him to ask these questions. And, and they treat it like this. It's, like, it's a big revelation. He's pranking them. Wait, I thought you were a transgender advocate who is literally paid to answer questions right. about this. I thought that was your job. Giving you a chance to answer basic questions. Also, there's a, there's a moment in the film to, to watch out for where uh, one of the interview subjects actually says, uh, oh, I ask him a question, and he says, oh, I saw that in your questions. Because... Many of the questions we asked, we, we actually sent them ahead of them because they asked for them. Yeah. And, uh, and so, like, okay, here's, here, here are the basic questions we're going to ask. Sure, go ahead. Got nothing to hide. But even those questions, they, they <laughs> collapsed in answering. They knew they were going to be asked them. So that, that is how... It's not, it's not Borat. You're not trolling them in that sense. You're very open about what you're doing. And you ask them very serious questions. And they can ask them. I mean, it's very... very the, the, only, the only Borat element of this is you didn't just say, I am a conservative. And I'm yeah. a religious person. Because if you had said that stuff, then they wouldn't have given you the interview in the yeah, first place. No, no, no. But that's, that, the, the questions you themselves know, are not a prank. The questions right. so, are just questions. At the risk of sounding like a liberal, asks a DailyWire.com member, how was your mental health impacted <laughs> during the making of the film? Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was not great for some of these interviews, I have to say. I mean, there was, there was a couple of times when, uh, when we left, and it was just kind of, in, in particular, one of the people we talked to is a, a sex change surgeon. Put quotes around sex change, because obviously you can't really do that. But... And leaving that, it's just very, it's very sort of draining because you're talking to what is just evil. I mean, you're, you're confronting something that is really pure evil, what they're doing to people. Also, shouldn't it be gender change surgery? 
if if they will actually grant that sex <laughs> well, it's, is a biological phenomenon. Yeah, it's now it's actually uh, the the term of art is gender affirmation surgery, ah. which of course makes no sense. The idea that you need surgery to affirm something that al- that you already are is an internal feeling. Right, exactly. Yeah. It makes no sense. So I want to divert for one second and just say because it is the beginning of Pride Month, uh, just how much I hate the term <laughs> Pride Month and how I, I actually do think it's relevant to the topic of what is a woman, obviously. This idea that you would take pride, pride in in things like your sexuality yeah, yeah. or uh, your preferential gender or whatever it is, you know, like I think as a general rule, one should not take pride in anything other than at most accomplishments. This is why like racial pride is such a anathema. Like, what what is there to be proud about if you if you were actually born some way? You didn't do it. You didn't yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, what is there? For and and the, you to the key take pride phrase in? there is at most. Because at most. I read this old book, you know, and it's yeah, like yeah, pride yeah. goes before destruction, <laughs> and a haughty spirit before a fall. Yeah. And I believe it's, it's the queen of all vices, is what uh, Thomas Aquinas said. And Andrew Clavin said it's the vice of all queens. Uh, <laughs> there, there is a distinct version of pride, though, like civic pride, national or pride, national pride, sort of like fil- filial pride, love that, of country. That's right. Yeah. That's a completely different idea. But part of what you have here is people sort of boasting in things that they also claim are innate. Yep. And to me, that, that seems you like know, a complaint. The one thing, the only thing that I think is a little bit off about this is we do take pride when our children go off and have children. You know? But that because you take pride out of a sense of accomplishment, in well, a way, part of what you're proud about when your child goes off and is married, your child goes off and has children, you're you're proud that you raised them to be the sorts and, of people. And created people who create people. You yeah, know? of yeah, course. Yeah. That, that and, is a compliment. And, and, and I mean, I think, you're not so proud if your, your child is Hunter Biden and he sires a child with, a, with, a, you know, with, with somebody, un, you know. But I, but I think this idea, I mean, almost all things that involve the word pride are, are shameful, or are people yeah. who feel ashamed. You don't have a, you don't have a pride parade if you're, if you're not ashamed. I mean, yeah. yeah. There, there is also something a little strange, which is that there are three main things that June is called. Uh, National Dairy Month. It's been that since 1937. I'm celebrating that. Uh, for yeah, naturally, um, you know, all Americans eat dairy. Uh, it, the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 23% of Americans are Catholic, and Pride Month. At the highest number, according to Gallup, 7.1% of Americans are LGBT. How come we pick the lowest one? Why yeah, don't we yeah. celebrate <laughs> National Dairy Month? <laughs> or or Matt, the Sacred we're Heart. coming up to two minutes now before the world premiere of your film. Uh, what is the one thing you want the audience to take with them into this experience? Uh, as they sit down to watch this movie? Uh, well, I'll tell you the, the thing that I want, can I answer a different question? What, what <laughs> should they take out of it, like a, after they yeah. watch it? Um, because I, I, I've been thinking about this because one of the things that, that we're hearing from people is, well, are you preaching to the choir, especially if it's behind the paywall and all that? And we've already kind of responded to that. But uh, this idea that the, pri- the choir doesn't need to be preached to, I, <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. I kind of reject. I mean, the choir's in the church too, right? We're going to ignore them. And I, I actually think that that's one of the most important things that we can do is sort of equip uh, people who are nominally at least on our side with some basic tools to go out and engage with these things. And also just kind of like presenting, okay, here's, here's, here's the issue, informing. I mean, there's a lot that we can do even for people on our side, and I, I hope that that's one thing. Equipping of the saints is an actual calling. And I, you know, someone said this earlier, Ben, it may have been you, that most people have not actually had to come face-to-face yet with the reality of the trans movement. It's something they're aware of it. They know somebody who knows somebody who's dealing with it, especially if you don't live in the coastal cities. Uh, I think that this film, for a lot of people, this will be their first time to see the real evil uh, that's being foisted on our society. We, we talk about the kids. That's obviously the most egregious place that it's being foisted, but not the only yeah. uh, place that these ideas are being foisted. And they are, they are meant to destroy society. Right. They are meant to destroy uh, social cohesion. They're meant to destroy the world as we know it, because they believe that a better world lies on the other side of tearing down the world uh, that we all love and defend. So thank you for making the movie. I can't wait for the audience to see it. Whatisawoman.com, if you're not a member yet, hurry on over there. For those of you who are already dailywire.com members or have become so uh, while watching this, we thank you. If you're listening to this in podcast form or watching it on YouTube, not live, but in the future, uh, good news, the movie is already there for you. Head over to whatisawoman.com and become a member to see it. And for those of you who are joining us live, sit back, relax, and enjoy What is a Woman. I am.
have no doubt that God will forgive you. But I hate God. Are we gonna make it out here? I know it's been hard. This is our dream, Hattie. Build a home on land we can call our own. Just gotta have a little grit. I'm heading to town grabbing supplies. Look after your mom gone, won't you? A mighty fine morning to you, ma'am. And to you. Is your husband at home? Get behind the stove with your sister. They came looking for your pa. That's why they're out there taking their time. Just take what you want and go! But what we want is you! Your father's walking into a trap. It's our turn to protect him. She is a sensible woman. Mrs. McAllister ain't cut out for this. Deep down, you're the toughest woman in this territory. Those killers outside are going to feel God's wrath. Kill them all! Five, take one. This was the second time he exhibited that behavior, yeah. 11 months earlier. Mark. I've never been so hurt inside. Mike's eyes are on Yeah. And even as I'm speaking to you right now, it's starting to come back. <laughs> This is an autonomous zone. 23 out of 24 hours in a cell. No TV, no magazines, no books, no nothing. So anytime a customer brings a counterfeit bill, and you see we have plenty of them, we tell them, hey, this is counterfeit. If the customer insists, then we call the police. How did you feel watching the trial? I thought it was a sham. All right, so I, I just want to start it with just you stating your name for the record, okay. as well as your professional background. I have been a police officer in the state of Minnesota for almost four decades. Forensic criminologist and certified medical investigator and police practices expert. Yeah, it's a good moments here. It's like we lived together almost, uh, I guess, it was about four and a half years, almost five years. So you guys, in, in many ways, were some of the people that were the closest to him. And I don't remember seeing your faces on the news or anybody talking to you, so I guess let's just start with that. You guys knew him best, so who was George Floyd? She's right. We haven't told our side of the story. Maybe it's time for us to tell our story, you know? 